Today, I'm getting a little bit bougie and making a pizza with caramelized pear and prosciutto. Hi, I'm Ryan from the Grill Top Experience, and one of my favorite things is pizza, and that's why I wanted to share this with you, as well as tips on how to be successful in cooking it on the Kamado. People have asked which grill is the easiest to bake a pizza on. That answer is easy, it's always been the gas grill. But you can't beat the flavor of charcoal and wood, and that's why the Kamado is a pretty close second once you get it figured out. I'm gonna show you my setup so that way you can replicate it on your own Kamado. Start off with about a chimney of unlit charcoal in the Kamado and add a half a chimney of fully lit coals. This will allow you to build the fire up slowly so you keep the temperature where you want it and don't overshoot. I added the cooking grate at the standard height, but then I added a cast iron pizza pan to use as a deflector plate. This keeps the direct heat off of the pizza stone and keeps things from burning. And for a stone, I'm using the deflector plate that came with the Kamado since it's made out of the same material. It's gonna take about an hour to come up to temperature and for the smoke to die down, so plan ahead. So you'll have to forgive me for doing this next part inside. It was nearly 100 degrees today and I wanted to spend a little bit more time in the air conditioning. You can't have caramelized pears without making some caramel sauce. I added about a one third cup or 70 grams of white sugar to a cold pan and turned it to medium heat. The sugar is gonna melt as it heats and when it turns into a golden pool, you're gonna know it's done. Just don't let it smoke or it'll go bitter. To soften the caramel, add a couple of tablespoons or 30 grams of butter. Let it melt and then mix it all together. Next, add slices of fresh, not canned pears and make sure that they're still pretty crisp. If they're super ripe, they're gonna disappear in the pan. And don't worry, they'll soften as they cook. We're gonna cook them for a couple of minutes per side and then give them a good shake every once in a while to keep things from sticking. You're gonna know they're done when the caramel starts to thicken again and take it off the heat and let it cool. Instead of mozzarella, I'm using ricotta cheese with one clove of garlic smashed in. Then add a glug or two of olive oil and mix it all together until it's smooth. I'm using Mrs. GT's famous pizza crust that I'll link to in the description below. You plop the cheese mixture on the crust and spread it around until it's smooth and reaches the edges of the pizza. Add your caramelized pears in whatever pattern you like. I'm using prosciutto, which is a dry cured ham that is absolutely packed with flavor. Cut into thin strips and spread it around the pizza. The grill has settled in at 500 degrees Fahrenheit and is burning pretty clean. So carefully put the pizza directly on the stone and shut the lid for eight to 10 minutes. Cross your fingers and if you did everything right, the crust will be browned and the toppings will be bubbly. Take it off and let it cool for a minute or two before moving on to the next step. Add some arugula on top so you feel like it could be a healthy meal, and then drizzle some balsamic glaze on top. You can make it yourself, but I bought some to save some time, but whatever you do, don't skip this ingredient, you have to have it. So it's like you get all of the different flavors all at once. The salty, the sweet from the caramelized pears, some of the sourness from the balsamic vinegar, and all of it comes together in a pretty amazing pizza. This is something that you would see on a fancy restaurant, but it's easy enough to make it at home. 